Hey, Marcy. I'm in Colorado, and I didn't even... I'm so sorry. (laughs) Enough said. I'm in Colorado. Understood. No, just kidding. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, my gosh. What are you doing in Colorado? My husband is having a work client. We just were snowmobiling. Just trying to make... uh, Just having a good time with family, and they have a bunch of partnerships, and they just brought us all together here at Beaver Creek. That's cool. I mean, that's nice. Yeah, so nice to be here. That's so awesome. Yeah, where are you guys? I was born and raised in Colorado, and so I spent a really good portion of my life in Beaver Creek, that whole area. I've been skiing since I was like three years old. So, But now now I live in upstate New York, and I love it. My son was at Hamilton in Clinton for a little while. Yeah. And Dirty Skittles is in Georgia. Yeah, I'm in Marietta, Georgia, but I was born in Colorado Springs, Colorado. That is so funny. Don't remember much of it, though, except for the snow. (laughs) Lots of snow. Lots of snow. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm ready whenever y'all are. Yeah, we're good. So, uh, Skittles, you want me to do the intro? Yeah. You ready? Yeah, go for okay, it. Ready? I'm ready to stretch. Three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Shit That Goes On On Our Heads. Today, we have an amazing guest, Marcy. Marcy, welcome. And my amazing co-host, Dirty Skittles. Welcome, Marcy. Well, thank you. It was so great to be on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, thanks for joining us. I'm excited to hear your story. Yeah, me too. Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's quite <laughs> a story. <laughs> so for our listeners, Marcy, what do you want to share with them about what makes you you? Oh, wow. Well, there's a lot of different chapters that have happened in my life. Which chapter do you want to hear about? Why don't we start with the biggest lesson you've learned? What was that chapter like? Mm, biggest lesson I've learned is that I can love myself. I can do in this life what it is that I truly dream about. And I can pursue a journey of of joy and helping others. And that is what really fills my soul today. And mm-hmm. I had a, so much self-doubt and hated myself for so many years because of circumstances that happened to me that were not my fault, but it is what uh, shaped me and created a young person that was just trying to survive and making a lot of bad decisions. And then I was basically through life feeling that I was just surviving and coping. But today I'm, I'm really living. And that's yeah. what I'm happy with. I'm I'm happy today. That that resonates. I can relate to that a lot. Mm-hmm. And for me, it took <laughs> 41 years to mm-hmm. get to a place where I can put myself first. Yeah. And love myself first. So it sounds like there was a time where you weren't sure that you were going to be able to be where you are today. Mm-hmm. Are you comfortable sharing kind of how? Oh, how yeah. That was or what I mean... I'm very open with my story. Just so you know, I have a book out that is, you know, all about my story called Chaos to Clarity. And and because of what I do today, uh, I share my my story very openly to try to help other people. Um, But really, when I was when I was young, you know, I was just like every other young person, um, full of love and joy and happiness. And I really loved everyone around me. And I just wanted to have fun and be a part of my family. But unfortunately, my mother had me very young. She had me right when she turned 19. Uh, She always had a a drinking problem. Of course, that escalated and was a roller coaster ride through life. And she actually ultimately died from it. But she had men in her life that were not great. And at six years old, her boyfriend beat me. 
and I made a decision to live with my grandparents at six years old. I had to was given the the opportunity to to live with them, and I had the choice, which is a huge choice, as you can imagine, making that yeah. decision at six. While I am very grateful that I lived with my grandparents during that time, those very formative years, my grandfather had a, a raging temper, so it was difficult to feel safe in the home. But I did feel love and I was taught morals and and I went to church and those things that were were important during that time. And then my mother remarried when I was 12 and I was ecstatic. I thought life was now going to be that, that fairy tale life that I always wanted. And it was great for about six months until the sexual abuse started. So there was sexual abuse. There was my mother and my stepfather drinking. There was me sharing with my mother finally at a point that this was happening to me and she didn't leave. That happened twice. Now, with that, as you can imagine, it was a very dark time for me. I wanted to kill myself. I was in eighth grade. I wanted to die. I was failing out of school. I lost all the dreams that I had in life. Um, And then I found alcohol and that was an escape for me. I managed to get through high school years, but relationships always in really volatile relationships. I realize now how much I was a part of those also being very reactive, having a lot of a very bad temper myself, you know, drinking in excess during that time. And then once I got out of high school, I basically left my mom's house and never went back. And then I got into the party scene, the true party scene. That was at that time, it was 87. And I started going to clubs and wow, like I felt so free, like, wow, the biggest Mm -hmm. escape ever, right? But still lost, still lost. Like, you're supposed to go to college. You're supposed to have all these hopes and dreams. And I knew I was supposed to go to college and I, I did attempt college multiple times, but always ended up not going to classes, not having any drive, not having direction and always finding people that I could party with. And that was my escape. My grandmother took me to a series of tests to find out where my interests lied. And I found out I was a very creative soul. I ultimately landed at the Art Institute for the music and video business. And that took me in a path of television. I started at a company called Liberty Sports Communication. Fox and Liberty merged. And I kept raising through the ranks in work. I started off in operations. I ended up being the manager of programming. I moved to Denver. Then I moved to LA and ultimately found my husband and you know, everything looked great. I ended up being the director of on-air promotions at FX. and But all the while, struggling, drinking, and just never feeling. I always had this idea of wanting to be loved and what I thought I deserved, but not knowing truly what that looked like, how to accept mm-hmm. love, how to love myself, constantly feeling like, No matter what I did in life, that I was stupid. I was never good enough. I I was always in relationships. I was really poor in relationships because I would stay in relationships, even if they were bad, trying to make them good. But once I felt that it was really at a place where I didn't think it was going to continue, I would step out of the relationship because I wasn't going to allow that person to hurt me. So as you can see, it's just this roller coaster of life that was just yeah. filled with self-hate, uh, the narrative in my head constantly, uh, just playing a victim all the time, playing a victim. And once I got married and had children, I felt this love like I'd never felt before for my my children, right? And mm-hmm. I knew that I didn't want to be anything like my mother because she ultimately, she let me down in every aspect, right? I mean, my father was never there. He was a drug addict. I mean, you know, an alcoholic. So, yeah. so many, so many issues. And, but you know, it's so funny. It's just like, everything always looked pretty darn good from the outside. 
I was able to build a life that looked pretty damn good, but on a very rocky foundation. Yeah. You know, until I had, until I had my final, I guess it would be, I've had, I had a lot of maybe what you could call rock bottoms, but for me, this was my final rock bottom. I got a DUI. I was 44. And that's when I finally surrendered. And it yeah. changed my life. Hardest thing I ever did, you know, quitting drinking when that's been your, 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 your way to manage. Yeah. Your way to manage life. I mean, yeah. it's hard. I wouldn't, I'm eight years sober today. Not today, but um, yeah. yeah, October. Fourth was my uh, eight years. It's been quite a journey. Yeah, yeah. It's I can relate to a lot of what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. And I one thing that stood out was as I was listening to you tell the story, and you started talking about love. Mm -hmm. I totally, totally get it. I myself, like in my twenties, was my party era, right? And uh -huh. trying to find something to fill that missing piece right like that void that I had mm -hmm. because childhood was pretty similar to what you shared mm -hmm. and I didn't know what that looked like mm -hmm. I saw it in movies mm -hmm. um heard other people talk about it but didn't really fully understand what love was and so I would take anything that I got yeah. whether it was good or bad right yeah but becoming a mom and now yeah. I have a six-year-old upstairs so I can't imagine making a decision like that at six but becoming a I got it. I understood because yeah. I was like, oh, you, it was finally I felt it, you know? You got like, this. The, is love. Yeah. But it was still like I had the love for my children. But you didn't love yourself. I didn't love myself. And I right. didn't know how to really love my husband. And I didn't right. really know. I never thought he really loved me. Yeah. Yeah. Until the day quit drinking, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there was nothing like the, that love for a child. And that's why it made it so hard trying to understand how my mom did what she did. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, that's so true. I'm sorry. But today, like, I've totally forgiven my mom because I realized just, she was so sick and I don't think she, she herself didn't have self-love. She didn't know how to take care of herself. I don't think she knew, you know, a man used to validate me. And so to be with a man, she never think, thought she could stand on her own two feet, right? So this is happening to you, Marcy. I can't leave because I don't know what to do, basically. Yeah. As crazy as it sounds like, she just didn't have the strength, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's it's pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. To, yeah. That's that's huge, though. That, to me, shows a little growth, right? Because you're able to look at your parent as an individual and understand kind of the struggles that they were facing that, you know, and almost taking yourself out of it and looking at them in their situation. How did you get there? Like, did you go through therapy to finally understand what that was listen i was in therapy most of my life it, <laughs> it only it only helps so much right true true um it wasn't until i was actually so i'll tell you my first i this is not answering your question but i will i want to i want to tell you first how i felt the love because that mm -hmm. will that will answer how i was able to then step out and be able to think about things in a different way. So the day that I decided to stop drinking, it was the next day after my DUI. Before that, I thought I was a victim. I thought I wanted out of my marriage. I, I thought that everything was being done to me. So when I surrendered in that day and I said, I have a problem with alcohol and I went downstairs and I told my husband, I'm an alcoholic and I need help in, in tears. You know, I, I was broken. He embraced me. And it was like, it was the first time I really felt the love that he had for me that he probably always had. Right. But, it, and it was like the weight of the world came off of my shoulders. Like I felt like I don't have to lie anymore. 
I don't have to hate myself. I don't have to hate this man in front of me anymore. Like I can really start, I can start getting well. And so what I did is I went to the 12 step program. I just was like, and now, and I had tried it before, but this time I was like, I'm willing, I am going to do whatever I'm told. I'm not trying to drive this bus anymore. I am surrendering a hundred percent because what I'm doing is not work. So as I worked the 12 steps, which I really wish everyone could give themselves the gift of working those steps. So even in the first one, surrendering that you have a problem with alcohol, basically, right? Surrendering, we have a problem with whatever our problems are because we all have something. But what I was able to start doing was really letting my higher power in. I was really able to start recognizing how people hurt me, but how I played a role in those things also, how I was hurting others in that process. So maybe their, them hurting me was a reaction to what I was doing, mm. right? So the sexual abuse, of course, that's not something I did, but the relationships and what happened after that, I did have a lot of, you know, a lot that I played in those, in those relationships. So then as I just continued down those steps and started growing in my spirituality, started growing in gratitude, started rewiring my, my brain, starting to become healthy because so many in any addiction, our body, our brain start to rewire itself because there's so much we keep getting those dopamine hits and our, our bodies really cannot tolerate it. So it starts, you know, rewiring itself so it can manage whatever damage we are doing to our bodies. And we're also with the toxins or whatever it is that we're doing and all those feel good chemicals that are in our bodies. We're not feeling those things in the way that we're supposed to. As I was starting to heal my my brain was clearing, my body was clearing, my soul was clearing. So I was able to truly see what was going on with me and what these generational cycles, and that's another thing I talk about in my book, generational cycles, like what happens to our parents? What happens to their parents? What happens to their parents? Oh, ends up affecting what happens to us. And so that's what, Amen. I, yeah. yeah, so, and even if I can see my grandparents in a certain way, it doesn't mean that how they raised my mother didn't cause a lot of pain to my mother, right? Right. Because I think I was trying to be the best to my, my kids, but when I got sober, I really became a good parent. Right. And I keep evolving as a better person all the time. So I become a better parent all the time. So yeah. I had to forgive to, to let go of the power of the pain that I had from that. And it still hurts sometimes. I'm not going to say it doesn't hurt because I'm so sad for that little girl that was me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 But. My mom was broken and I saw it through her life. And as much as I tried, tried to help, she ultimately, you know, died of her addiction. Like our addiction takes us in so many different ways and we all manage our addiction differently. And I had no control over what happened to my mother, even though I tried to help as much as I could. And I had a bunch of guilt with that, too. You know, I was living this great life and my mom's in like rehabs, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine. I get it though. I mean, yeah, you see a younger version of yourself and that kind of ties into a question I thought in the beginning of you sharing your story that I mm -hmm. wanted to ask, which is if you could see yourself as a younger version and have a conversation, what would what bit of hope would you give to your younger self? What would you say to, to a younger version of yourself? Oh, 
that you don't get what's happening right now, but you you have to go through what you're going through right now to live your best life 20 years from now. Oh my God. The exact same conversation I had with myself yeah. on Christmas Day of 2022. So on Christmas Day 2022, I had a massive mental breakdown. Mm. You know, thank God 988 picked up the phone. Thank God some guardian angel out there. Mm -hmm. Thank God my wife was home. Thank God for therapy. Yeah. But I, I was so broken on the inside. On the outside, nobody could tell how broken right. I was. But on the inside, I was like, I hated myself. I, I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little bit older than both of you. But, you know, at my age, you know, we were taught not to talk about mental yeah. health, right? You shove that shit down as far as it yeah. can go until you can't. It has no place else to go. So Christmas Day 2022 is when that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, here in upstate New York, we had like minus 20 degree mm -hmm. weather. Cars didn't start. You know, it was just the absolute, like, the, just the worst. Like, I hadn't, I couldn't do it anymore. But there was that little glimmer of hope that maybe things do get better. Yeah. And they did. Yeah. Like, the life I'm living now, I couldn't imagine that because I had to go through all that other shit yeah. to get where I'm here now. And I mean, your story is a story of hope. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, that's, you know, what I, I hope that our, our listeners can can gain from this is there is hope at that at the end of that tunnel, but you really got to put the work in. It just doesn't happen overnight. That is the thing. And I'm so glad you said that because we can all share our stories. We can all help to educate and give resources, but you have to take the action. And you have to put the work in. And you know what? It's a daily thing. I have to do something daily to grow and set myself right. But it's worth it. That's the thing. Like, I jump around and act like a fool in silliness today because I'm so mm -hmm. happy. Whereas, you know, before, mm -hmm. I just would be like, trying to be all perfect on the outside and just putting up every wall so nobody could get close to me. But I don't have to do that today because you do have to put in the work, but there's so much joy and happiness when you do. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like I would never, I could never imagine the life or the rewards or just the pure joy that I have now. I mean, I can think a lot of what, what has happened for mm -hmm. me for two dirty Skittles. Like this, the podcast was never, ever in the wheelhouse, yeah. ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. And it all started because that, like a couple of days after Christmas Day, I had started calling her. She, we, we had worked together and we would talk about stuff that you just shouldn't talk about, right? And we laughed about, about a lot of stuff. I'm like, oh, we should just record this. Uh -huh. But it was so helpful because to me, laughter is my healer. Mm -hmm. And being able to share my journey, right? So I shared my journey from the day I started therapy and I, I still share it. So, and one of the, because I don't want people to feel lonely. Exactly. And one of the things that I always say, and I hear you saying this, is that you heal through sharing your story. So if someone shares something with me and they'll say, that was the first time I've ever said that. I've ever shared that with anyone. And I'm like, that's the start of your healing. And it's not like it, you have to do it like we're doing it or on my TV show or in a book or, but sharing, getting it out of you and start no. releasing mm -hmm. it because honestly, this stuff stays stuck at a cellular level. Yeah. And gotta start yeah. cleansing it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a huge lesson I learned in my therapy was that I didn't have to carry the weight anymore. That I could yeah. let it go. It didn't have to come with me. So one one question I wanted to ask is since it does because I believe it you have to continue yeah. to work at it. What um do you do? yourself like what what is working at it look like for you today 
So this is something I started doing early in my program on the 12 step program, which is AA. I started every morning. I would start saying what I'm grateful for. I did guided meditations. Um, There's one where you connect to God. It was a 15 minute meditation. I did that every morning. And it, and it's, Not a type of meditation where it's any faith-based meditation. It's higher power, universe, whoever source, whoever it is for you. Because what it ultimately is, it's a meditation, and I do it in different forms now. It's a meditation of connecting energetically. And it's truly, it's really a feeling of love that goes throughout your body. So it's not like looking at what we were taught when we were little in organized religion where God's in the sky and you're connecting, you know, to to this idea of that. It, and we're all connected energetically. We're all supposed to be connected by love. And God, universe, source is the ultimate energetic love source, Right. So it was, it's a meditation like that and taking yourself out of yourself to be able to connect that way. So I would do that. Volunteering, helping others, big, big way to get out of yourself. So whether you're in the rooms and it's helping other people in the rooms, whether it's helping people in the community, whether it's helping an organization that's important to you. And it's not really just about money. It's about It's really about taking the action of helping somebody else. And maybe it's just somebody in your family that needs help. But I think a lot of this stuff needs to step. You need to step outside of your family to do the healing because there's, you know, of course, there's really good relationships with people in your family. But I think it's good to get out of yourself and and what you're comfortable with to start helping others and, and you grow from that. I also try to evolve and learn in some way every day, whether it's reading a chapter of a book, whether it's listening to a podcast, whether it's listening to, for me, I like to listen to a lot of spiritual healers. I like to learn about the law of attraction and manifestations. Those all have come through my practice. I think it's really important to take care of your body as far as what you're putting into it, drinking enough water getting enough rest, exercising. And I'm not talking about going out and doing a boot camp. I mean, it can be walking, you know, <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's just, these are all things that are, they're healthy. They're good for you. They're, they fill you and connect you, your body, your mind, and your soul. And it's, and that's really what it's about. Connecting those three things, connecting to others and connecting to your higher source. And the biggest thing is living in gratitude. And we can have the worst stuff going on. But you know when people say, oh, well, that's a silver lining. But if you find something, just the littlest thing that's good, if you feel like everything's going crappy in your life, do you have a roof over your head? Are you able to put food in your mouth? Do you have a a bed to sleep in? Do you have eyeglasses to put on when you can't see? right? Do you have moisturizer to put on your face? (laughs) Like these are things that are small, but it's the small things that build up and really matter. And living in that mindset of gratitude is life-changing. So start small, yeah, start small, and it will evolve, evolve. I I remember in the very beginning, I had like this little um, gratitude box and and then I had a gratitude jar and I would write them down on a little piece of paper And at the end of the year, or if I was feeling down, I'd go and read them. You know, it's these little things you can do for yourself. It is. And I I love that that you're you're practicing a lot of self-love and self-care, right? And maybe setting up some different boundaries. I mean, like for me, that was my problem. I was so busy taking care of everybody else. I wasn't taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Happens when you're an empath. Yeah. But, you know, I set up some serious things. I'm going to tell you the last year mm-hmm. has really been the best year of my life. Yeah. And I just continue to grow. Yeah. I'm very humble and a lot of things are a little surreal for, 
for me right now. Yeah. But I'm so grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful for that power that was whispering in my ear Mm -hmm. and said, things will be better. And they are. And we we laugh all the time about crap that happens to me, right? Like, in what world did this happen? (laughs) Happened in mine. (laughs) Don't know why, but it did. But I I just, I love your story. And I, I, yeah. Thank you for being so brave and vulnerable and helping others, mm-hmm. right? Like, and just be kind. Can, can everybody just be kind? Please just be kind. It's not that hard. I got to tell you, that <laughs> it's so it's so, so much about being kind. To yourself first and then yeah. to others. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's huge. So what's next for you? Oh, gosh. So I just started writing another book. I literally this morning was Mm. sitting in the hotel room. And again, everything that I've done, starting my talk show, um, writing my first book, everything I've done has all been guided, right? Guided by my higher power, Gretchen, talking those whispers, listening, allowing yourself to hear, listen, and eventually having the, um, going through the fear and starting, right? Just starting, starting small. Because if you think about everything and the, the grandiose picture, you're never going to start. So somebody like a couple of times has come up about another book and I'm like, I am not writing another book. This is crazy. Right? <laughs> This has been so much work for the first book, right? And, but I tell you, so many rewards coming from the book and I'm still, it. I launched it last year. I released it last year and I get some beautiful things that are coming down the pike. And, um, but I just got a journal from the girl that does my makeup for my show. And she's, she gave it to me as my a Christmas gift just a few days ago. And dragonflies are a big part of my story. And so it's a journal with a dragonfly on the t- on the front. And I said, oh, is this for me to journal, which I don't journal, but I've always felt like it would be a good thing to do. It, and, and it is, get things out of you, right? I think I just spurt everything out, so I don't have to write it down. But, um, <laughs> she goes, no, it's for your next book. And I'm like, oh, and she yeah. go- I said, you know, it's so <laughs> funny that you say that because it's come on so strong because I kept asking myself, God, like, what is my next book? I, I don't know. What do I, what do I need? What do I need to share? What do people need to hear? Because it's not for me. It's for other people. Right. And it came on so strong that I need to write about the first 30 days of sobriety. Ooh. I was just wow. starting to talk about the surrendering to get to the first 30 days. And then what happens in those 30 wow. days? So I think that might be my next one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing chaos to clarity. And that's the chaos mm-hmm. of my life. And then being able to see the clarity in my life through my healing, my trauma, my alcoholism, my addiction to bad relationships. Mm-hmm the way I was harming myself and then putting down the drink, what I went through and how I got sober and then the beauty of life today and how that mm-hmm. happened for me, the steps I've taken. I have a lot of action items in there and a lot of education in there to help people. And, and what I love a lot is that a lot of people will tell me like they may not have an alcohol problem, but the book helps them because it's a lot about mindset, right? It's all about mindset. At the end of the day, we all have to heal from something. We're all hurting ourselves because we're trying to heal from something. So there's that. And my show, like, Wake Up With Marcy, I just brought on a a co-host, Wake Up With Marcy and Hillary. And um, just really trying to grow the show as much as I possibly can to reach as many people as I possibly can. Hopefully go national. Now that we're going Mm -hmm. streaming, maybe get on a great streaming platform. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So, right. you know, just trying to keep plugging along and I, I will never 
I will never stop being humble and I will never stop giving up the reason that I do this. And, and it's at the core about helping people. I don't care how many accolades I get, how many awards, whatever it is, it is about helping people. And God has put me on this path to help people. And that's what I'm doing. Even as hard as I love this. It can be so damn hard sometimes. I still have to shake my hand and it tells me that I, I want to get yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then I have the I, next I, day. I still have yeah. Hmm. yeah. I I still have shit in my head. Like there are days I still get depressed, but now I have like better tools, right? It's I have, the tools. I have stuff to help me through it. Yeah. And I have my best friend, right? I get to do a podcast yeah. with and we get to laugh about stuff that we probably shouldn't laugh about, but you know, whatever. Hindsight is 2020. <laughs> but I, it's with every episode we we record, it heals me just a little bit more, mm-hmm. right? And very humbling and I, I love to learn. Mm-hmm. And um, I already have your book. Oh, it thank came you. this morning. Thank you. I need to add it. I'm going to go add it when we're not. I don't want to be rude and be like, oh. <laughs> yeah, don't go to Amazon right now. Okay. okay, um, okay, okay. But I, I, you know, I, I follow you on Instagram and I, I read your stories and I, you inspire me. Oh, right? thank to you. Just be, be a better person. Oh. And yeah, you know, it's okay to like not be okay. It really is. Yeah. But like, if you're not okay, at least find some way to find your voice mm-hmm. or find your footing, mm-hmm. because there is somebody out there willing to talk to you. There really is. There's always somebody uh, there to help was, you. Mm-hmm. Th- yeah. That was my regret. Is that at the time all the shit was going yeah. down, I couldn't find my voice or my my footing because mm-hmm. I didn't know how to approach that yeah. because I'd never felt like that before. Yeah. But I will never, ever, ever let myself get to that point again. It was terrifying. Terrifying. Could I ask yeah. you this, though? Because when I was in eighth grade and I wanted to end my life, and then I got to the other side of it, I always held on to that. That no matter how bad things are, it's always going to get better. Always. And I don't have to it, hurt it may myself. Not be the- yeah. And it may not be the dream that you had for yourself in the beginning, right. but you're out there living, mm-hmm. right? And you're bringing joy to somebody. Yeah. You, maybe even to yourself, but it's totally worth living. And and living it, living in the moment. That's that is my my mantra oh. for like the last six months. Live in the moment. That is another you, thing. You never know. Yep. You, you just don't know what's gonna happen. I try to stay, Mm -hmm. that is another thing I learned that I try to do every day too. Stay present in the moment. Stop thinking about what happened in your past and stay stuck in that or worry about the future Mm -hmm. that you have no control of. The only thing we have control of is where we are today and then the moment that we have. And I love that you spoke about the tools because I just recently was going through something with someone and I was taking it in such a oh a negative way, right? And before I would have drank mm-hmm. over it and I would have, that person's wronging me and I would have cut them out of my life. But I was able to be like, how am I really taking this? Am I, is that really what's happening? Because I know mm-hmm. how I can perceive things sometimes and we all perceive things differently, right? We could all hear a story. And we walk away with a different takeaway. We all heard it differently, right? So, yeah, it's pretty powerful. I, I love love talking with you guys. You, yeah. You, you've been awesome. And um, if you want to listen to a really good episode, we did an episode with our friend Liz. Um, she passed away from breast cancer, mm. but her episode mm-hmm. is so powerful mm-hmm. and it's all about living in the moment mm-hmm. not taking life for the granted mm-hmm. and that episode changed my life mm-hmm. i in in all the good ways and i think in some former fashion her hand is guiding us mm-hmm. on our podcast journey Aww. but in a, but in such a good way right yeah. she she was our biggest supporter and marcy i love Aww. you i love 
that you yeah, share thank you, everything with us. Thank you. Yeah, this has been amazing. I appreciate you being vulnerable with us and sharing with us and our listeners. Anytime. Thank you so, so much. I do have one question. Where can our listeners find out more information about you? Just beside, beside your book. If you go to wakeupwithmarcy.com, you will find okay. information about my show and I am always on Instagram I tr- and, and Facebook. I'm always trying to give a little bit of light. So that is wake up with Marcy. If it has the underscores, do you have to say that? Wake wake underscore up underscore Marcy under, I don't know. Like <laughs> you don't have to, we'll put it in the yeah, show notes. The show notes. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll link it stole there. my account and then I had to get a new account. I had these underscores. So um, honestly, if you go and look up Wake Up With Marcy or Marcy Hopkins, you can find me. I'm here if you want to DM me. If you have any questions, I'm here. That is so awesome. Thank you, Marcy. It's okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone.